Hi, the internet. I'm Bob from Orbital Investments, LLC, and welcome to the space station. Yes, we are mobile. So I'd like to take a moment today and discuss what kinds of things you should be thinking about when you're considering getting into cryptocurrency and Bitcoin for the very first time, and whether you really want to do this or not. A few of my notes. First, let's talk about risk tolerances. Um, could you really be comfortable putting all of your assets in your pocket and walking through a dark alley, some gang infested place, say the TSA terminal at uh, LAX? Um, that may cause you some concern. That's kind of what's going to happen if you get into cryptocurrency. Also, there's nobody to call but you. Uh, Bitcoin has no support department. You lose your keys, it, the money's gone. It can't be recovered ever. Also, would you be comfortable taking a few days to access your money? Uh, over and above all of the interbank, uh, ACH and all those kinds of networks, it takes time to convert your, from where your savings are in crypto back to fiat where you're paying your bills. Uh, also, would you be comfortable in doing your own technical research? You want to know intimately about what a coin or a token is before you decide to put any money in it. So that takes some time. This is this is not going to be as simple as walking down to the bank and opening up a account. Also, there are social things to consider. Uh, there is a bit of discrimination between the Bitcoiners and the no-coiners. On the one hand, your no-coiner friends are going to think you're an idiot uh, because they just don't understand. They want to take the time to understand. Um, on the other hand, in the reverse discrimination, are you going to be comfortable living in a world full of people who don't understand you? Um, so let's talk a little bit more specific about your risk profile. What are you, you really worried about in how you're going to lose your Bitcoin? Well, <clears throat> better than 90% of the risk is you and you fumbling the keys. So we'll talk about that in a minute. But other risks for the other 10% are both private sector and public sector criminals, uh, which both deploy could deploy actually breaking and entering into your home, rifling through your stuff. Uh, are you comfortable taking that risk? Or and both public and private sector criminals use um, malware, key key logging, uh, spyware, that sort of thing, trying to get your keys off your computer. So you have to be aware of that. Um, legal harassment. The public sector is going to start coming down on cryptocurrency legally and using both laws and aggressive taxation. We'll talk about both of those in a, in a bit. But once you understand what things you in particular are, are worried about, because it's different for every individual, then you're ready to start thinking about defensive planning. So given your individual risk profile and you have to be brutally honest about your limited ability to execute, I mean, sure, big Fort Knox and all these, you know, um, mission impossible kind of doors and gateways. And what if you forget the information? Could you actually get through all of that, even if it was yours? The other limitation I want you to think about is uh, what if you pass on? Um, what are the technical abilities of your successors in regards to being able to pick up where you left off? If you set up a security system that your kids can't break in, it's going to cause problems. And you're not going to be able to pass on what you save up. So be honest or be prepared to get wrecked. But in, in the overall strategy, however, is because we don't understand how to really make things secure in a digital way, the, the best strategy is to make your security and digital rely on security and physical. And we, we know how to hide things in caves and safes and whatnot. Uh, we grew up doing that. It's, it's in our genes. So that's probably the safest way for humans to handle Bitcoin. Um, also, you have to be aware of crypto and standard finance are essentially two different planets. Um, you might as well be banking on Mars and doing business on Earth. So your creditors, people you owe money to, your employer, people who give you paychecks, your bank, they're all in your bank's world. They're all doing business on your bank's databases, on the ACH and 
and the, the Fed and all that. Whereas crypto, well, it's off in the internet somewhere off in its own little sector. It's a whole, whole new galaxy, to be honest. And when you try to touch ACH through crypto, it can cause time lag and it can cause expenses and fees. And the interchange fees can be kind of high. So be aware of that's coming. Um, but on the upside, there's a whole new galaxy of, of finance forming. Starting, of course, with Bitcoin in 2008 or 9, depending on which article you read or when software is up, it created an independent, um, nationally neutral, politically neutral fund that can't be printed into oblivion. I mean, it, it is being mined and such, but it, there's a limit. Nobody can print Bitcoin for nothing. And then Ethereum started in 2015-ish, and that's basically Bitcoin, but it's programmable, much more programmable. And that opens up a whole new world of possibilities and applications. And beyond getting into these two, you're going to want to start looking at the top 10 coins according to market cap. And those are going to be for your more risky, uh, a little bit of your couch cushion money. You want to take some risks, get some better returns. But you got to be careful. This is where you really start having to do your own research. And beyond the top 10, there is a forest of altcoins. The altcoin forest is immense. There's tens of thousands of coins out there that you could be investing in. And most of them are garbage. <laughs> but bringing it back into DeFi projects, which started on Ethereum and are starting to run on a couple of different uh, blockchains like EOS uh, and Cardano, but most of it's on Ethereum. But now you're starting to see these are lending banks so that's a whole nother opportunity to lend out your crypto and bring back interest or if you need a loan go get a loan without having to pass any credit tests all you have to do is collateralize it and beyond that even beyond the altcoin forest there's still kind of the outer rim of this galaxy is the shit coins and there's probably a hundred of these coming up every day and beyond that, you want to get into, you want to know what a ICO, initial coin offering, or an IEO, initial exchange offering, these are corporate coins. These are essentially replacement for the stock exchange. And this is growing just as fast as the stock exchange is disintegrating. It's all being transferred over. So you're going to want to know about this new whole new world. And then they're also kind of in fits and starts trying to start up digital fiat currencies, they're going to have to do it. That's going to be about next when the dollar collapses. You're going to want to know about those and why they are not cryptocurrencies and what the differences are in order to keep yourself safe. So you kind of have to keep yourself safe in from this war of these, these two worlds that's going to occur in the next eight to actually four to eight years. So what's going on now? Okay, this is translates into four years safety. It's in German. Think about where that came from. Um, it's all repeating. So the government is catching on. Uh, they are not on your team. They have never been on your team. Um, finance is not taught in schools. Nobody teaches you this. I mean, home ec is more about cooking than how to keep a budget these days. If you can find a class, uh, your bank is not going to mention crypto, although they are secretly hoarding in the background. Um, they don't want you to know that. Crypto is not mentioned on TV. MSNBC mentions it once a year or when the price spikes and then that's it, just to wreck the normies. Uh, social media is actively censoring crypto. Now, YouTube is, is canceling out crypto channels. Uh, Twitter is kind of on the edge of starting to do that. Facebook is actively censoring everything. And your brokers for your usual retirement account well, they think that crypto is Martian. I mean, you mentioned that their eyes would just gloss over. You expect no help from them. Worse than that, um, on the FUD side, fear, uncertainty, and doubt, F-U-D. Might as well start learning the acronyms. Uh, Russia is, is banning Bitcoin. They're going, they're, they've got laws in, in the pipelines that will hit pretty soon. Pretty much a $7,000 fine or seven years in prison if you're caught using or exchanging or doing commerce in Bitcoin within Russia. So that's just the start. I expect a lot more of that. Uh, I've heard Chile is having economic problems and they're going to start also coming down on Bitcoiners and cryptocurrency users. 
Um, they, they do it, you know, for your safety to protect you from all these high risk investments. But that's that's a front. Really, what they're doing is they're trying to protect their own currency. They don't want value being sucked out of whatever currency they're, they're printing to oblivion and put into all this crypto where it's safe. Um, on the upside, DeFi is evolving faster than the Fed can print. It's just insane how big, how fast this thing is going up and how many new projects are coming online, how big the liquidity pools are getting. So there is hope. Uh, the new world is going to win. It's, there's just going to be a, a few trilogies between here and there to get through. And if you're getting into crypto now, you need to be willing to partake in, in those battles because they will come to your door. Uh, so I wanted to save the backside of this for the next video. I hope I've given you some things to think about. And we will see you in the next one. Signing off.